Welcome back Wastelanders, your favorite LEGO Vault Dweller Kubrick here with another dose of some epic post-apocalyptic building and today we're about to make something that many of you have been waiting for a long time. We already have most of the Mojave Desert done and in the last episode we started outlining what is in front of the vault so now it's time to make the entry itself and trust me it's going to be something you won't believe it's even made out of bricks. I don't want to set the world on fire, I just want to make the most epic LEGO Fallout mock there's ever been, so go ahead and grab some mud fruit, open up that Nuka Cola Quantum and let's get immersed into the Fallout universe with this amazing creation, so let's get started right now. Ok guys, but before we jump into the actual progress I've made, we first must settle the dispute that was going on in the last two weeks, both in the comment section as well as my recent community post and that is the custom weapon I wanted to use. And you guys have spoken, two thirds of you have chosen that I should remain a purist and not use the custom rifle for this build, so sorry little fella, but this gun is out. But we can't leave this poor guy unarmed, right? What kind of an example would he give to his fellow raiders? So because of that, I've experimented a bit with making my own rifles out of original pieces and these are a few ideas I got with the emphasis on the middle one. Maybe you've seen some similar ones, maybe not, but I know I have searched the internet for some inspiration and couldn't find any that would speak to me fully so the ones I made were some variations I mixed out of different ideas and this one speaks to me the most. Of course with this one I had to commit a slight crime of cutting a hand short for the front side but I think it was worth it. FBI, open up! But we're not here to talk about weapons right? Instead we better focus on what can actually be built now so let's jump into the actual progress. Having the parts from the hole I showed you in the previous episode, we now have most of the pieces to make the floor on the courtyard, so we should start with that. The pattern we have already established, so now it's time to put the new panels into good use. As most of big surfaces that had to be covered, it isn't the most exciting work, but hopefully the end result will be. Ok, not so many of the panels missing, so I'm very glad I managed to get so much in just one order, because I will be able to fill the floor at least partly. And that will surely help me visualizing the next step, but since I can't wait to start that, let's skip the floor building part for now and jump straight into the main attraction of today's video, the door frame. And this was yet another struggle I had to overcome. As you know from the first episode, I already have the door prototype ready and it just needs some parts in the correct colors, but the frame is a totally different story. The door that is made faithfully to the game, with 9 teeth around, by itself was a very hard thing to do, but now I have to build around it and it's even harder than I thought. So this is my first attempt of figuring out the shapes and angles I have to make using some blocks with slopes and ingots, put around a circle of hinges and even though it may look decent, there are still too many gaps for my taste because none of the angles seem to be working perfectly in between. I tried out a couple of options and this one with 1x3 wedges would fit nicely, but I just can't stand the studs that are left here so it's out of the question at least until LEGO doesn't come up with some wedge tiles. So the one I've chosen for now is a mix of regular 1x4 slopes connected with a two sided snot brick and some inverted slopes. And let's see how it will work acting as an actual wall. At first glance it doesn't look bad and it's held very firmly together, but the further I go the bigger the gaps we have in between the segments are. And not only that, I mean just look how it's all connected from the back. I made a weird technique contraption to hold the sides, 
but without making it at least 3 times the thickness it has now, it won't be able to connect all 18 segments around the door, so I guess this option isn't what I'm looking for. Especially that because of all the stress I'm putting onto bricks to make it sturdy, the whole thing is becoming more and more uneven. And that is something I just can't accept, so I have to figure out a different approach. Thousands of tears later. Okay, after another day of brainstorming, I came up with a totally different technique. Not only the segments going in between the teeth are now made differently using bar handles, which create much better angles, but also the mounting of the wall elements is simpler, and to be honest, it's looking way better with a mix of different 1x2 slopes. But the best thing about it is how it looks from the front. I mean, just look at this. Isn't that just awesome? There are barely any gaps visible, and it actually holds together even better than before, just using some hinge bricks from the sides. Of course, as we go higher, the technique of holding these segments will change a bit, but I really like how it's going, so let's move on, shall we? A few moments later. So we have a couple more segments added, with the biggest ones using 1x2x2 two two slopes instead of the higher ones, but that's something that is dictated by the angles, and to be honest, it doesn't bother me that much. So let's add a couple more of those without mounting them for now, just to have a basic idea of the looks. And that looks awesome. So let's not waste any more time and make the final segments on the top. Now we have the full wall assembled, again not connecting the last three segments, but that is something I have to work around for now before I make the top of the frame final, but I'm really happy of how it all turned out. The hinges hold everything quite firmly, but I've added these two columns just to keep it all in a straight line, so let's check out how it all looks from the front. And this is just epic. I had to make some small changes with the brown lines compared to the Vault 51 I'm using as inspiration, but I still like how it looks because the star shape making up the wall still gives a build a lot of character instead of just being a plain grey surface. And speaking of plain grey surfaces, let's quickly make one on the side just to establish the shape around the door frame and see how the lines connect with these walls. For now, it's just the simplest brick on brick technique, but to be honest, it doesn't look that bad. The lines connect almost perfectly, and at least we have now sketched the size of the concrete wall we'll have here, before we switch to making the rock work it's embedded into. Looking at it now, I may change the texture a bit later on, maybe adding a couple more brown lines in the big grey segment if I figure out how to transfer it to the main wall, but for sure I will change the slope part of the top because I don't like the angles for now. In the game it has more of a 140 degree angle and that would look definitely more appealing, but for now I just want to make the same simple wall on the left side because now it just looks so incomplete even for a work in progress episode. And here you know the drill. A bunch of 1x2 bricks stacked together so the easiest thing one can do, but doing that it got me thinking on how I can make it more post apocalyptic. The walls in the game are of course not that damaged to make the wall full of holes, but I may try to incorporate at least a couple of cracks here and there. Or maybe I'll add a few vertical brown beams sticking out of the concrete to make this section a bit less boring, but with that I need to experiment a bit when I finish the whole frame, so not yet. Ok, so we have the wall finished up to the place where the sloped part will be, but honestly I haven't thought about how to make a better angle here yet, so I guess I will leave that for next time. But what I did thought about is the floor which at the moment just looks so incomplete. So I came up with an idea that I won't wait for the new parts to arrive and just make the frame with not only dark grey panels but also some rusted ones using reddish brown, dark tan and medium nougat ones. 
I just have enough of these colors to complete the whole pattern, so with all of them mixed in place, we can cover the entire floor with some concrete tiles. First, let's pull all of the simple ones that doesn't require too much thinking, and with the ones left that need some more complicated assembly to fit the smallest holes, I'ma need some help. Bruh. And we're done here. And just as predicted, this floor pattern I made here is just spot on with these big concrete tiles covering the whole courtyard. Of course, just some basic clean ones for now, without any cracks or holes, but that I will be able to change quickly in a later part of the series when I'll get to making the Raider Camp and all its details. For now, I'm good with what I have as the entire thing looks way better and with this done, I guess we can call it a day. Now, after connecting the previous desert base place, the entirety of the progress just looks so good in my opinion, making up a pretty huge and impressive mock altogether. But what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and of course give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you somehow haven't done that yet. I will see you guys in the next video of this series where we'll continue working on the vault structure and start making the rock face, so until then, as always, just remember to keep it breaking.